Always follow your dreams. Never give up. Don't think about what others will say. Just do it. These motivational phrases can sometimes mislead you, especially if you suddenly decide to become an astronaut. Yes, if you have dreamed about it since you were young and have done everything to get into this profession, you have a great chance. But what if you're a lawyer or study history at some university and suddenly decide to quit all this and go into space? How likely is this? Let's find out. So, to become an astronaut, you need to apply through NASA or any other space agency. Let's focus on NASA for now. At the first stage, you need to have a tertiary education. You must have a bachelor's degree in mathematics, engineering, or science. Not all at once, but the more degrees you have, the better. Additionally, you need to have two years of experience in your profession. You won't be able to join NASA right after the graduation party at the university. Okay, you've finished your studies and obtained the profession of a space engineer. You have worked at a rocket construction plant for two years and finally sent your application to NASA. But this doesn't guarantee anything. The agency looks at your experience and professional skills. However, you're not the only one. There can be more than 10,000 applicants. The next step is a medical examination. And here, you may encounter an unsolvable problem, such as your body size not fitting the set parameters. You're a potential spaceship passenger, and you will also need to wear a spacesuit in outer space. If you're too tall or short, you won't be able to sit comfortably in the pilot's seat or wear the spacesuit properly. But don't worry, the range of acceptable parameters is extensive. Furthermore, you should have excellent eyesight. The good news is that you can wear glasses or undergo surgery to improve your vision. It's not a problem. Of course, you should be in good physical shape, have no bad habits, and maintain a balanced diet. The agency will spend millions of dollars to send you into space, so the demands on your body will be high. Also, your communication skills should be well developed. You will spend several months inside the ship with the same people, so you must always be polite and stress resistant. Various tests, puzzles, and games will help the commission assess your psyche and character. If everything goes well, you can proceed to the next stage. After that, you will run on a treadmill with sensors. Specialists want to find candidates with minimal risk of getting sick during the mission. It's not necessary to have big muscles, but it's essential to have no problems with the heart and other organs. If you start experiencing health problems while flying in outer space, you may endanger other team members. Then, a special commission selects individuals with the best results. Congratulations, you have passed, and now you're an astronaut candidate. But don't rejoice just yet, as a real challenge awaits you ahead. Within the next two years, you will undergo rigorous training to acquire all the necessary skills to work in space. One of these skills is public speaking. Every astronaut should be ready to speak publicly in front of a camera or a crowd. You must also learn different languages to interact with the international ISS team. No one will allow you to board a space shuttle without medical care skills, because you must be able to save people's lives in case of an emergency. However, the most enjoyable part of training is practicing in conditions that simulate weightlessness. The coolest way to experience this is through the Vomit Comet. You ascend to a great height inside a special aircraft, and then the pilot begins to fly in a wave-like motion, diving up and down. Inside the plane, you experience zero gravity for about 20 seconds, and this process can be repeated approximately 40 times per day. It's a fun experience, but it can cause stomach problems, and that's why this simulator is called the Vomit Comet. You will also spend a significant amount of time in another weightlessness simulator, underwater. In the special neutral buoyancy laboratory, you will dive into a massive swimming pool where astronauts simulate space work and practice emergency procedures. Prepare yourself for heavy loads. You will have to spend up to seven hours underwater. Before commencing the flight training program, you must become a qualified scuba diver. To achieve this, you must pass a challenging exam, which includes swimming a certain distance in a flight suit and tennis shoes. You will have the opportunity to experience the effects of high and low atmospheric pressure inside pressure chambers. You will enter a cabin where oxygen is supplied at different pressures. Also, remember all the simulators that rotate and turn you in various directions. Such training requires a high level of stress tolerance, so be prepared to control your panic and remain calm. You will also spend a significant amount of time inside life-size mock-ups of spacecraft interiors. This way, when you arrive at the ISS, everything will feel familiar. Additionally, you will practice moving objects in space using the precision air-bearing floor. 
In a frictionless environment, it becomes easy to transport large objects, but difficult to stop them when they are moving at high speeds. The air bearing floor functions similarly to air hockey, releasing jets of air that assist in moving objects in the desired direction. During the training, you must determine the type of astronaut you aspire to become. There are two types, pilots and mission specialists. In the first case, you are responsible for the flight and passengers and may even become a captain. The second profession entails performing a substantial amount of work on board and interacting with the pilot and captain. These specialists engage in scientific experiments and carry out maintenance tasks. They can be responsible for areas such as science, medicine, and engineering. To become a pilot, you will fly 15 hours a month on special NASA jet planes. Additionally, you must spend some time inside modified training aircraft called the shuttle, which simulates landing and docking with the orbital station. Furthermore, you will need to acquire an extensive amount of knowledge. You will be required to understand space transport systems, software, and operational mechanisms of various orbiter components. This includes environmental control, propulsion systems, and much more. By the end of your training, you should have a perfect understanding of all these aspects. Each astronaut during this period is assigned a unique teacher, a single systems trainer. They will assist you in every aspect, monitor your actions, point out errors, teach you to recognize system malfunctions, and guide you in taking the correct steps to resolve them. You will begin training on the shuttle mission simulator at the final stages of your preparation. These are complex simulators that replicate real shuttles. You will learn how to properly prepare for launch and take off, maneuver the shuttle into orbit, dock with the ISS, and safely land the shuttle back on Earth. You will also acquire skills for executing complex flight maneuvers and responding appropriately to emergencies. Upon completing the training, you will be prepared to handle any challenges an astronaut may encounter. While most of these situations may not occur during your actual flights and time spent in space, you will have the confidence to handle any potential issues that may arise. Becoming an astronaut requires embarking on a lengthy and demanding journey. Unfortunately, not all stages of this path are within your control. The majority of individuals who aspire to go into outer space are eliminated during the initial stages when the selection committee evaluates each candidate. However, all the tests and challenges are worth it because in the end, you will attain one of the most prestigious professions on Earth. You will have the opportunity to visit outer space and experience breathtaking views of our planet every day. Oh, and it's important to note that astronauts receive a substantial salary. The specific amount depends on your experience, qualifications, and mission. But even the minimum pay rate for an astronaut is above $100,000 per year. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.